Okay, Randy, take it away, please. All right. Well, perfect. Um, you know, uh, I would like to, to start by uh, thanking all 70 of you uh, for uh, making the time to, to join uh, John, Carly, and I for the launch of Pulse Research's uh, latest study of our audience's purchase intentions. Um, Pulse has been working with uh, our colleagues from Sound Publishing now for, I think it's over 30 years, and uh, we've been working with John and his team since uh, 2013. And our relationship with our, our friends at, at Pulse Research was, was really built around the need to answer uh, two fundamental questions. And, uh, you know, those two questions were, uh, is our audience interested in purchasing the goods or services that uh, our advertisers are selling? And will advertisers get uh, a measurable return on their advertising investment? And uh, you know, I think those two fundamental questions are as important today as, as they were back in 2013. And John and his team have, have really sort of provided um, the expertise and the tools needed uh, to help us answer uh, both of those important questions. And, and I think it's safe to say that the answers to those questions have never been more important to advertisers um, than they are today. And, you know, you've been doing, uh, you know, a fantastic job of, of rebuilding uh, our revenues. Uh, and I want to thank you uh, for your efforts. Of course, we, we know uh, that we still have a ways to go to get back to our uh, pre-COVID transaction levels. But, um, you know, the good news is that uh, for us and for our advertisers is that uh, our audience reach and uh, our audience engagement levels ha have never been higher uh, than, uh, you know, what they are today. And, and really, you know, throughout the pandemic, uh, you know, communities we serve have, have turned to us um, for, for information, uh, you know, public health information that's really sort of vital to them and their loved ones. And I think, you know, the trust and the confidence that our audience uh, has placed uh, in us to provide that public health information is, is equally transferable um, to uh, consumer purchase information. And I think, you know, the study that John and his team uh, have just completed is certainly uh, the most current uh, consumer purchase uh, intention data available to uh, you know, uh, your local business community. And, and that data is certainly going to help to inform um, merchandising and, and uh, marketing decisions that local businesses have to make at uh, this important point in time. So I'd just like to take this opportunity to, to thank John and his team, uh, as well as Carly and our leadership team uh, for the work that they've done in compiling this data. So now it's uh, my pleasure to turn the uh, meeting over to uh, Mr. John Marling, president of Pulse Research, uh, to share what we've learned about our audience's purchase intentions as we emerge from the pandemic and why this information is so important to the efforts of local businesses uh, to recover from the disruption of the pandemic. John, over to you. All right, thank you so much, Randy. I sure appreciate your friendship and support over all these years. And to Carly and Sean and everybody else at uh, Black Press BC, thank you. We are committed, a partnership. We're in this together to assist and support you in every way we possibly can. And you know, Randy mentioned that, and obviously this is an understatement, you know, the pandemic has had a major pan impact on every single one, you know, of your local businesses. But I've got some good news for you. The information, your current updated shopping information that we put together and I'm excited to uh, share with you today is a phenomenal catalyst to enable each one of you, each one of you to be a hero, to be that consultant, that partner, that guide to help these businesses identify new solutions because of the, all the changes, there's been a lot of fundamental behavior changes in shopping patterns, et cetera, because of the pandemic. The bottom line is the businesses are, are looking for that crystal ball to identify those new opportunities. 
And so the information, now more than ever, like Randy said, is critically important for you to help and assist your local businesses. Because when they prosper, obviously your publications will, and each one of you will, you know, individually, obviously, in, you know, in your commission program. Kind of quickly go over what we're gonna cover today. First, I wanna go over the new shopping information and do everything I can so that you're not only comfortable with it, confident in it, but excited, excited to get out there right away and engage and share this opportunity information you know, with your local businesses. Then the next thing I wanna cover is some specific ideas and suggestions on who are the best business prospects, the business categories that are best prospects today. I've gone through your research page by page and kind of put myself there in your shoes. Which businesses would I contact? Which ones are the best for opportunity to grow your advertising base based upon the shopping patterns of your readers? And boy, there's some great ones for you. I put together the top 10 for you. Then I want to give you an overview of how to use Pulse. Many of you are new, and uh, it's been a long time since we've gotten together, and I appreciate the opportunity today, but I want to just go through a quick overview, the flow of Pulse, and how it relates and supports your fundamental sales process, you know, from prospecting, getting the appointment, you know, engaging, you know, all the way through closing. So I'm gonna go over that in detail with you. Then I wanna cover some best practices. You know, Pulse is fortunate. We work with hundreds and hundreds of publications around North America, and we're constantly learning. And, and people, both the uh, management teams and the individual ad reps are sharing with us solutions and ideas, breakthroughs. And I'm gonna share and happy to do some of those you know, with you this, this morning. The other thing I wanna do is cover some of common objections you know, to help you in your day-to-day. -day. You know, objections like, well, we can't advertise because we don't have any product. We can't advertise because we don't have enough staff. You know, those are real world realities today. I wanna help you be able to effectively overcome objections like that, along with the, you know, more traditional ones. Well, I don't have budget. I don't have any money, print is dead, et cetera. So that I can do everything we can you know, to help you in your day to day. And then we'll do a wrap up with, you know, five recommendations that I have, you know, that I think would be very effective for you. So let's begin, okay? I've got a quick question for you, and the, and the question really puts into perspective, and I'll just be blunt. There are many on the call today that aren't comfortable with statistics and research, and that's okay, I understand and I, I get that. But what I wanna do, like I said a moment ago, is make sure that you're, comfortable and excited to use this information of your audience and their shopping patterns. So let me ask you a quick question. Do you reach households with your Black Press publication and your websites that will buy a new car in the next 12 months? Simple question, yes or no? And you can unmute your microphone right now. Yes or no, do you reach households that are gonna buy a car in the next 12 months? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. But now let me have a follow up question. How many households do you reach that are going to buy a new car in the next 12 months? How many? Who has the current number? Probably none of you. But that's, that is the essence. But now let me take it to the real world. Steve Marshall Ford, Sean, Steve Marshall Ford and Nanaimo, would they be interested to know right now today, in the next 12 months, how many households you guys reach with your paper and your website, how many cars are gonna be bought by your audience in the next 12 months? Sean, would, would Steve Marshall Ford like to know? Uh, Sean, they definitely would wanna know that. that. Yeah, definitely. And so that is, it, what we're talking about this morning is really, really simple. You do have households who are gonna buy a car. 
that's a given. You have households that are going to get a realtor. You have households who need a chiropractor. You have households, you know, who are going to go to a restaurant. But you don't know the exact number, how many. But your businesses would love to know, like Steve Marshall would love to know. And that's all that Pulse does. Pulse just asks the questions your businesses would ask. Do you plan to buy a new car? Do you plan to change or get a new bank? Do you plan to use a chiropractor? That's all we do. We ask your audience, both print and digital. We reach out to them, you know, with ads in your publication, with links on your website, you know, with emails to them, and just ask them the questions your businesses would ask. It's as simple as that, okay? And so all we do then is put that information so that it's easily accessible to you, so you're able to access it. Boy, when I started Pulse many years ago, we provided statistical books. And unfortunately, they just sat on the shelf. But in today's world, and I know how busy you are, you can access your current shopping information for your region of Black Press and BC, and access the information that the businesses want in under 45 seconds. And I want to repeat that, in under 45 seconds. And you can also engage with them on your mobile device in real time. And so the information, as I mentioned, is of your audience. This isn't market information, it's better. It's information of your audience, print and digital, on their shopping intent over the next 12 months. And here's great news. There's over 590 business categories. Everything from automotive, real estate, healthcare, financial, retail, um, and every other single category you can think of. We wanna make sure that you have for your local businesses what they want. And that's the crystal ball of what's in it for them. We have and you guys did a super job promoting your survey. And Carly, remember when you and I talked, we, we wanted to get a survey of Black Press BC. But you guys got such a phenomenal response. We've got statistics, shopping information for the Lower Mainland, for BC North, for the Islands, the Kootenays, and BC South. So it's localized for your publication and your black, pub, black press publications right around you. And by the way, in doing over 35 years of research, the golden number, the standard that ad agencies, governmental agencies, et cetera, is 400. You have smashed in every single instance the basis for statistical validity. So summary, all Pulse does is very simply ask the questions the businesses would ask of your audience because they want to know what's the opportunity for them. And Randy, you said it so clearly and so beautifully the first time I was up there. Tell your story. That's what this is all about, is quite simply telling your story about the opportunity for the businesses in shopping opportunity of your audience. Randy mentioned a moment ago that the pandemic has significantly enhanced the critical information position of your print and your digital you know, uh, websites in terms of providing community information. Your sites, your papers have increased since the pandemic. Why? Because you're more timely, it's more critical, that local information. And so the information we gather, and I just want to underscore this because a lot of people think, well, print is dead, et cetera. In the last month when we did the survey in 2019, and I'm sure if we did it today, it would be even higher because of the fact that you've got more people coming to your websites and reading the paper because of the timeliness of you know, health news, et cetera. 70%, 70% of all households on a statistically random sample, you know, 
read or read a paper or visited your website. Unduplicated last month, 61% in the last week and 46% in the last 24 hours. Be proud of that. That is awesome. You reach the market. As I promised a second ago, I want to make sure that this information is extremely effective, usable for you. So I put together some wows, if you will, some things that I thought were extremely meaningful that would be very, very effective in telling your story. First fact, 49%, 49% of your audience said yes, they made a purchase or sought more information on a local product or service advertised in their local black press paper. Think about that for a second. That's one out of two, 50% have made a purchase or sought more information on a local product or service advertised in your black press paper. That is a extremely positive and every advertiser should be well aware of the fact your paper works. People are using your paper to make purchases, okay? Your demographics are absolutely awesome. It's the, it's the households that the businesses wanna reach. 27% over 100,000 household income. Average house, household income, almost 80,000. Very well educated, 56% college or greater education. 73% own their own home. And another statistic that I think has a lot of arms and legs to it is 20% of your audience either own or manage a business. That's a huge opportunity for additional advertising and revenue. Think about that for a second, because businesses buy cars, <clears throat> businesses buy real estate, businesses you know, buy insurance. So when you're making a presentation to you know, the automotive dealership, also include the business purchasing for automotive. And once again, as promised, here are the 10 prospecting categories, business categories that I would suggest. And I will send to you this list. One of the most important priorities that each of you have is growing and getting new business. Prospecting, not just any old prospects, not any old business categories, but the business categories that represent the immediate best opportunity for you, based upon your audience buying patterns. Look at this, financial businesses. 25% of your audience plan to change or get a new bank in the next 12 months. Heck, I'd be out there right away sharing that, telling that story to every single banking entity in your community. Why? Because it shows not only an opportunity for them to increase and get larger share, but it ought to scare them a little bit that 25% of their customer base might be leaving. Financial advisors, look at that, 11% plan to change or get a new financial advisor in the next 12 months. Credit union, 15%. The bottom line for that is the pandemic has caused a lot of families to reevaluate their financial planning needs, et cetera. And there's the reality of huge opportunity for you. So I would write down, you know, who am I going to contact? Financial related businesses. Next on my hot list would be some medical businesses like dentist. 39% of your audience plan to change or get a new dentist in the next 12 months. Pulse, by the way, ask the question like you're seeing here, do you plan to change or get a new? I mean, we could ask a question, do you use a bank? And it comes back, you know, 98% use a bank. And they say kind of, so what? So we asked, do you plan to change or get a new bank? Do you plan to change or get a new dentist, et cetera? That has much more impact and motivating. So I would contact dentists, 39%. Fluidity out there, plan to change or get a new. Optometrist, 23.6%. There's also other medical categories. Then I would certainly take a look at and focus on professional service businesses. Because remember, there are, there are the reality today, there's retail businesses who the supply chain is, you know, frankly, a, a little challenge and they can't get product. 
So I would switch a little bit. I would target, you know, financial businesses, medical business, and these professional service businesses like insurance agency, you know, 19% plan to change your new. And look at that, auto insurance, 29% plan to get a new auto insurance policy. Legal firms, 7.5%. Look at this huge number, 16% will get a new will or trust. That is a category I'm hearing more and more from you know, our clients across North America. They're getting great results and success by targeting legal firms. Accountant CPA, 11%. Taking a look at some other categories here for you in the top 10. Realtors, 8.6% plan to change to get a new realtor in the next 12 months. Remember, this is of your audience. But look at this. Of those who plan to buy a new home in the next 12 months, 28% don't know who to call. Wow, what an opportunity. Of those who plan to sell a home, and obviously listings is a very big deal, 27% of the households you reach who plan to sell a home in the next 12 months don't have a clue who to call. What a great opportunity for realtors in your market. Then taking a look at some other categories, pet store, 31%, restaurants, 62% plan to use carryout. Education's a big, big category. People have, real, have really reevaluated their lives because of the pandemic. 11.3% of your, of your audience plan to attend college, either full or part-time. That's both in person and online. So I would certainly take a look at the education entities in your community. They are a high priority target. Along with charitable groups, 44% of your audience plan to donate to a charity. And here's a significant one for those of you in classified, recruitment. 19% of your audience currently are seeking a new job or career. But we also asked, what type of job career are you qualified looking for? From retail, to truck driver, to administrative, to sales, et cetera. We've got the information for you for those in recruitment that you're gonna be able to tell one heck of a compelling story. So in summary on the prospecting, you've got an immediate, incredible opportunity driven and based upon your audience's purchasing plans. Randy mentioned a moment ago that you know pulse matters now more than ever. He's absolutely right on. And the reason for that is, is because the changing business client has frankly become the new norm. Change is. And every business is continuing to experience change and uncertainty. They want solutions. And I'll tell you what, and I'll be very, very candid. They do not want another damn sales call. These businesses are being called on 30 to 40 times a week by some media entity trying to sell them something. Everything from the, you know, the local high school you know, to a Google solution, on and on and on. The, you know, selling product is not as effective as it was. What we need to focus on is finding solutions, helping the business with the information about and for their business to identify solutions for them to help them grow their business. Now I'd like to cover the simple steps to use Pulse. I'm sure many of you on the, on the webinar today, you know, aren't as familiar as Pulse as some of the legacy team members. So I thought it would be quite effective, productive, just to give you a quick overview of the Pulse tools resource for each step of the sales process. Starting out with prospects. And once again, not just any old prospects, but what business categories are the most closable? And then Pulse has put together a very simple but effective tool resource to take those prospects and put them into a call list. So you can plan your day, plan your week, and then keep on top of where you're at. We added fairly recently an appointment tool resource. And that gives you, frankly, the words to say on the phone, the email follow-up to provide the talking points on what's in it for the business, the benefit statements, so they want to meet. They want to get together to learn more about the opportunity. 
And then of course the presentation, discovering, identifying opportunities, solutions for the business. And then I'm sure you're very, very good at presenting a campaign, a proposal. But I would certainly recommend a consistent campaign, 52 weeks and yes, you can. Then many of you have the Metro Creative Graphics Spec Ad Program, great news. We have embedded right now into your Pulse program, the ability to create a spec ad in real time within Pulse to show that business, here's some ideas on how to reach the opportunity of our audience. And then of course, in the sales process, closing. One of the, I think the most effective tools resource we have for you is a closing tool. And it takes away the fear so they realize, I can do this. I can sign a contract because I'm confident there's no risk. And then of course, reporting, tracking, you know, your, your follow through of the program. And now what I've done is I've got a little visual tour and then we're going to go live. Okay. So prospects, we've got multiple prospecting tools, including the business categories that are most sold around North America. So once again, the low hanging fruit targeting the business categories that have the highest propensity of saying yes. And we'll go over that live in just a second. Okay, then you can take those businesses within those hot categories in individual businesses and put them into a call list for yourself. Then we've got the words to say to engage with that business with information from your polls uh, research that gets their attention. And let me just spend a second here. So you get this attorney on the phone, you put the attorney, attorney on your call list, and now you've got the words to say. Hi, John Marling from Black Press. We just participated in a unique survey. We asked the same questions you would ask of our audience. Do you plan to change to get a new legal firm? That grabs their attention because it's about and therefore their business. And then right at your fingertips here, we've got some talking points for you over the phone. I thought you might like to know. We reach over 2,800 households who plan to change or get a new legal firm. And they go, oh my gosh, that sounds great. And we also found out we've got over 6,400 households who will get a new will or trust in the next 12 months. We asked additional questions about their legal needs for their family. When's a good time to get together? And it's been phenomenally effective because you whetted their appetite. They realize you did a legal firm survey. You asked the questions they would ask. You had information. You've given a couple of talking points teasers here. And now their interest has been phenomenally successful at breaking through and getting the appointment. And I'll show you this live in a second. You can create this literally with one click. But then the reality is in many cases, you've got to leave a phone message. And so we got some suggestions and ideas from some of our um, clients who said in the email, or excuse me, you leave a voice message that says, I'm gonna send you an email, but watch for an email with a subject line that says, I need a new lawyer. I need a new car. I'm looking for a pet store. That grabs their attention. And then when you send them the email and follow up, here's an example. So you left an email for the lawyer. I'm gonna send you an email with a subject line, I need a lawyer. So the business, the lawyer gets that email with that subject line. Now they're gonna open that email. And then once again, you put in the benefit, the opportunity. Like Randy said, you're telling your story. You give them some, some points here of opportunity. It grabs their attention. They want to get together. And then if they haven't called back, and by the way, I hear so many times you know, from our clients, my gosh, the lawyer called back within 10 minutes. They want to get together. And they want to because they see the benefit, the opportunity, what's in it for them. And so in quick summary, and once again, we'll go live here and show this how it works, is we put together the ability for you to engage, 
is a phone call, email to break through and get the appointment, okay? And then when you've got the appointment, engage with the business, and I suggest the flyer. And the reason for that is when you're engaging with that business, discovery, helping them identify solutions, you've got the big number, the opportunity of your household audience purchasing for their business category, like with the legal firm here, over 2,800. But let's find a solution. What to target, what to advertise, where to get more business. And they go, oh my gosh, look at wills and trusts. Almost 6,500, we should be advertising wills and trusts. So you found a solution for them. And then you can follow up very quickly in real time and create a spec ad right within your Pulse program. So the business says, my gosh, we should be advertising wills and trusts. And literally with two clicks, you can create a spec ad like this that the business then says, yes, let's do it because you've made it simple for them. They realize here's the opportunity and here's how to reach them. And then the closing. Pulse has this closing tool that engages with the business. So they realize with their own information, what's a customer worth, what's the net customer value based upon their input on the cost of goods, and they realize, oh my gosh, I only need four customers to pay for a consistent 52-week campaign. And they're gonna say yes, because now you've taken away the financial fear, the uncertainty. And I'm gonna go over now live, you know, each one of these areas so that you are familiar and comfortable with and excited to use the tools and resources to help your local businesses. And I forgot on the screen right now, my apologies, is our reporting program. It's designed for you. So that every time you create a Pulse presentation, you engage with an appointment, et cetera, it automatically logs it for you. So you can very simply access where you're at, you know, with that sales process, with that individual business, okay? And so now, let me do this. I've been chatting a little too long here. Any questions or feedback on what we've covered so far on the research, the prospecting suggestions, or the overview of Pulse relating to the sales steps, the sales process? Okay, okay, so let's go live. So we'll click here, oops. Okay, so I'm live now in Nanaimo. Okay, dokie, Sean. And what I'd like to do is just quickly go through an overview of your live Pulse program and all of the new shopping information for each one of your Black Press BC regions is now live within your Pulse program. So let's start out with prospecting. Pulse has multiple prospecting tools right at your fingertips. You click here on the prospecting tool and up will come the prospecting solutions resources. Hot prospects based upon most sold. There's a prospecting uh, widget set up based upon your sales territory. It's a Google mashup. Then we've got audience buying power based upon the spending of your audience, which is a real eye opener and very motivating to the businesses. And then we have a prospecting tool for special sections that you might have coming up. So let me click off on that and I'm gonna go back to the dashboard because the prospecting tool that I would recommend and is most effective is the most sold business categories. So you click there on most sold and up will come a list of the business categories that across North America, in real time, it's constantly updated by Pulse. These are the business categories that are most sold. Look at that, realtor number one. Family style restaurant, auto repair shop, financial advisor, insurance agency, legal firm. So let's click on legal firm. Legal firm's number 10 most sold. So we click here on legal firm and up will come 
a specific list of businesses to target within that category, legal firms, attorneys. And so let's put together a little call list here. So we add the call plan, add the call plan, add the call plan. It's as simple as that. So you're creating your own call list. Then you click up here on your call plan and right at your fingertips are the businesses that you've added to your call list. And earlier today, I put in some automotive repair businesses. You know, I put in these attorney businesses. And you'll notice here, the obvious next step in the sales process is getting the appointment. And so we've got a direct link right here to the phone words to say, the email follow-up, or if you're doing a drop-in call, the words to say. You know, those awkward first minutes, when, you know, when you walk into their business, maybe it's the first time. You know, what do you say to engage with that business? So this is the call plan. It's available as a resource for you. But let me go back to the dashboard because many times you just want to engage with that business. So we'll click here on most sold business category again. And by the way, you can, I'm going to give you a couple other quick tips here. One of my recommendations is click on category. That will reorganize the 590 business categories by category, like apparel, arts, automotive, beauty and spa, community, education, on and on and on. Remember, education is one of the top 10 that I would recommend. Okay, so now let's go back here to the dashboard, if I might. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Click on the business categories again. And now let's engage with the next step of the sales process and get the appointment. So we'll click here on legal firm and we'll choose a legal firm. So up comes a map. I can click on the map, okay? And click on phone call or email, or I can come over here. And let's say with Manning, I click on connect and phone call. And oops, so select up in legal. There we go. Sometimes my internet is not perfect, okay? And so when you click on the business connect, up comes, like in the example I shared with you a moment ago, the words to say on the phone. So you got the phone number right here. And so if you're lucky and you get them on the phone, remember, this is their research, okay? That's what's most important is they understand we ask the questions they would ask. You know, we did a survey about legal firms' needs, okay? Do you plan to change to get a new legal firm, okay? And then you share with them. Look at that. Nanaimo, Nanaimo Sean, you've got almost 2,400 households who plan to change to get a new legal firm. Thought you might also like to know, Sean, we all got almost 5,000 households who plan in the next 12 months to get a will or trust. We also asked other legal needs they might have. Would you like to get together? I'm more than happy to share the information from the legal needs survey we did. And that's been very effective at getting them to say yes. They want to get together because they realize the opportunity. Now, if in, in reality, and many times you're leaving a voice message, just say to them, I thought you'd be interested when we found out from a legal firm survey we did, legal needs. I'm gonna send you an email with how many households said I need a new lawyer. Watch for it. It's got information about what we found out in terms of opportunities for legal services, okay? Then you mark it as engaged that you talk to the person, okay? And let's assume for the moment you got the appointment. So right at your fingertips here is it creates for you the Pulse Flyer. This is the tool, the resource to engage with the business. You can do it either in person, or on a Zoom call like we're doing right now, okay? Couple quick tips. The most important thing is just to help you grow your business. Remember, you're their partner. 
Pulse asked the questions you would ask of our audience. Look what we found out. We've got almost 2,400 households who in the next 12 months plan to change or get a new legal firm. And by the way, how did we, how did we determine that? Pulse asked the questions for us. They found out that 7.6% of our audience said, yes, they plan to change. Here's the number of households we reach you know, each week. It's just simple math, okay? And so it gives them the opportunity, but let's find a solution together. Where can you grow your business? Discovery. Oh my gosh, look at wills and trusts, almost 5,000, okay? We should be focusing on legal you know, wills and trusts. And then you just click right here on spec ad, and it goes right into the Metro Creative Graphics spec ad program. And you can identify from the many, many example spec ads they provide for you. And there's the wizard, and he's putting together some spec ads for us. You select an ad, okay, so we click here on search. And then you select a particular ad, okay, immediate legal help, for instance. You can customize the ad. You can download, share the ad. But most important, you can save it right to your Pulse presentation. Okay, so the ad pops up here. And this will be much faster for you because I'm sure you have a little speedier internet than I have in the mountains outside of Portland. So we click on Save Ad in Pulse. And as simple as that, your ad has been now saved to your Pulse presentation right there. So you've got your opportunity and then you just view it here, okay? As simple and as fast as that, okay? So now let me click off there. One other quick thing I'd like to show you. It's the drop-in. It's that engagement right away, that well, kind of little, you know, little uncomfort when you're, you're making that first call, that cold call, if you will. So let's go here. You know, one of the categories that I suggest was financial advisor. That's a huge opportunity for you guys. So click on financial advisor. You're gonna print your flyer, you're gonna walk in, but now you wanna know the words, the suggested words to say. So we click here and you click on drop in. And by the way, we're recording this. I'm, I'm covering a lot this morning, I understand that, but I wanna cover as much as I can. But here's the words to say. Once again, it's consistent. It's their research. We asked the same questions they would ask. We did a financial advisor survey. We asked you plan to use a financial advisor or change over the next 12 months. And what are their financial needs and plans? And that works great because so many times when you walk in the door, what are you here for? They say, I've got some good news. What's that? Well, we just did a financial advisor survey. They go, oh, what the heck do you mean by that? Well, we asked the same questions you would ask. Like what? Do you plan to change or get a new financial advisor in the next 12 months? And every single time, that gets that business's attention. And you say, we ask the question, they say, what do you mean? Well, do you plan to change your IRA, or that's IRA in the States, you plan to change your investment plans? we asked other financial needs. And they say, well, can I see that? And now you've engaged and they want to get together with the information. So the door opener is a extremely easy tool, you know, to use to when you're in person and working with the business. So now you're there, you've got their attention, they're interested in advertising, you show them a spec ad. And so the next step in the closing process is, or in the sales process is closing. Right here on your home page is a link to the Pulse break-even calculator. Let me suggest that you put it on your phone or your mobile device so you can do it in real time and engage with the business. You click here on help and click on FAQ and it shares with you, how do I put Pulse on my mobile device so I can do this with the business? Once again, with them. So you click here, and here's the steps to add Pulse to your screen on your phone or tablet for an iPhone or an Android. 
And I would suggest you do that right away because now going back to the break-even calculator, I'm gonna share with you how extremely effective it is. So I'm there with the business and I say, let's work together, you're the boss. Let's figure out what's comfortable for you in terms of the cost, the campaign, et cetera. And once again, they say, well, what do you mean by that? Well, let's figure out what's comfortable for you and realistic in number of new customers you need to pay for the program. And I said, like, and I said well, if you need 1,000 new customers to pay for the campaign, probably a little risky, right? And I said, yeah, of course. What if you only needed a handful? Probably much more comfortable. So, yeah, okay, great. So let's say the cost of the campaign is $12,000, okay? 52 weeks. So I asked them, what is the value of a customer? Let's say it's a furniture store. What's your customer value? Get a new customer. Well, sometimes they say, well, I don't know. They say, well, do you think it's 15,000? Oh, that's too high. What well, do you think it's 500? Oh, that's too low. So you do kind of a high low with them. I think it'll be around $2,500, okay? So you get that from them. So you get their buy-in. And then we've got to figure out your net customer value because sir you've obviously got to pay for the furniture before you can pay for the advertising right so your net customer value so what's your cost of goods well, my cost of goods is around 65 percent okay well look at that your net customer value is 875 875 into 12,000. you only need 14 customers over the next 12 months to pay for this campaign just 14. And by the way, that's 14 out of the 6,300 households we reach when the next 12 months are gonna shop at a furniture store. You only need 14 of those. Do you think that after 52 weeks, you're gonna get at least 14? And here's what happens. Time after time after time after time. The business says, well, that's a no brainer. And they say, yes, let's, let's do it. It's phenomenally effective because now you've taken away the fear. You've made it easy and comfortable for them to say yes. If I was to suggest just one tool of Pulse to use every single day, it's this closing tool. It has been extremely effective. And let me share with you a worst case scenario. The business says, I don't think I'll get 14. That's ridiculous. Okay. You click here on the thumbs down, okay? And you ask them, what do you think? You know, I'm proposing a two by seven, 25,000 impressions on the website. What do you think is the absolute fewest number of customers you know, out of the 4,000 we reach are gonna shop a furniture store? What is the absolute worst case scenario? And they say seven. It's funny how they always cut it in half. Seven, okay, seven. Okay, so seven customers, sir, at 875 each is $6,100 campaign. They just sold themselves a $6,100 campaign because seven is the absolute worst case scenario. So in summary, the closing tool has been very, very effective at getting the business comfortable. Because one of the objections you hear all the time is, well, I don't have any money, right? I've already spent my budget. This is a tool and a resource so they quickly understand that, yes, they can. And by the way, when you're out in the field and you've got Pulse on your home screen, you just click here on Show, okay? And then right on your screen is a list of the presentations that you've created. Remember, you can create these in about 45 seconds. Then out in the field, you're out there with the Manning Law Firm. You just click on your icon here and up comes on your phone your pulse flyer to engage with them okay and remember in discovery you want to find solutions and by the way when you're there with them in person or on a zoom call like now you just click on the editing button and you access all of your black press purchasing information what else would you like to know oh, i'd like to know about bankruptcy attorney okay i'd like to know about malpractice intellectual You've got a phenomenal tool and resource available to you. Taxation attorney, oh, I'd like to know about that. Then click on update and you've created a custom business opportunity 
report for them. As simple and as fast as that, okay? And so now let me go back to, and I wanna make sure the screen is sharing here. Okay, yes it is, okay. So in wrap up, as promised, I wanna cover some of the objections from businesses. The, your real world, reasons for not saying yes. I have no money, I have no budget. When they real, and that's an excuse, you and I both know that, right? Because what you find out is two weeks later, they just made a huge commitment to the radio station. And so use the break-even calculator so that they realize that yes, they can. What if a business says, well, the shopping is, data is from the islands. You know, it's, it's not from Nanaimo, okay? And let's say 15% plan to buy a new vehicle. What I would suggest you say is that's okay, I understand. Yeah, the research was done from the islands and what it shows is 15%, okay? But you're the expert. You've been in business many years here in Nanaimo. Based on your knowledge and expertise of the car business in the Nanaimo market, if it's 15% for the islands, what do you think it would be if the survey was done only in Nanaimo? And just let them answer. And they're gonna say, well, if it's 15% on the islands, I think it would be 17% or I think it would be 13%. Point is, is you overcome that excuse, that objection, so that they understand that there is a huge opportunity. You've blown right through that objection. Another objection you might hear is, well, the numbers are too big and the business doesn't believe the projection, the opportunity of your audience. Here's the reality. Businesses are not getting the total share, the opportunity they should and, good, should and could be getting. What they're forgetting about is out of area online shopping. That leakage is huge. We asked in your own survey, out of area and online shopping, 37% of shopping across Black Press BC is out of area or online. 19% is in another community, another 18% is online shopping, that's huge. And so when they realize that, that puts a little fear into them and they realize I should be advertising more consistently so that I get more of the total shopping here at my business and it's not going outside the community or it's not going online. Another major objection that you're getting is, I mentioned this a moment ago, is, well, I don't have product, the supply chain, okay? Find a solution for them within Pulse that they do have product or they can get. Or another suggestion I have is focusing on the the 10 high priority business categories that not, are not encumbered by these current supply chain issues. That will help you build your business through this time of uncertainty. And yes, we will get back to a more normal period. Another business might say, well, I don't have the staff right now to support new business, okay? That's a reality. So help them understand that there are other things that they could and should be advertising that had helped them grow their business. But another thing is, I'll always remember, I made a, a, a four-legged sales call to a travel agent right after 9-11, and a travel agent was obviously not gonna advertise airplane flights, et cetera. And so we talked about would the opportunity, would the shopping go you know, to zero? And she said, of course not. And so the bottom line is what this business realized, just like this business who said, well, I don't have the staff to advertise, is that other businesses also will pull back, right? Because you've heard businesses, well, I'm not gonna advertise because I don't have the staff, et cetera, right? But the businesses who do continue to advertising, guess what? Because other businesses are pulling back, they're gonna get a larger share. It's a phenomenal opportunity for them to increase their share. And once again, a business will say, well, print is dead. You can blow that right out of the water with the information, the opportunity, the big number, the reality of the power, the significant purchase opportunity you know, of your print and digital audience.
And then in conclusion, I promise to share with you five recommendations, five personal recommendations. My number one is, and this is critically important, every time you engage with the business in person, over the phone or by email, the most important thing is make sure they understand it's their research. It's a real estate survey. It's a furniture survey. It's an auto survey. It's a hearing aid survey. It's a chiropractor survey. It's their survey. And it is because all Paul did for you was ask the questions they would ask. And that immediately gets their attention. When they think it's your research, and it is your audience, but when they think it's your research, then they think you're trying to sell them something. So recommendation number one is every time you engage, make sure that they understand it's their research. Number two, I already mentioned the break-even calculator. Always use that. Third recommendation is starting today, make a list of every current advertiser you have and immediately share with them, tell your story about the opportunity in the shopping of your audience. So this is current, fresh, they don't have this, for the products and services they sell. The benefit to you is you're gonna reinforce that relationship so you retain that business, particularly if you've got a contract renewal coming up. But here's what happens, and I've heard this all over, is so many times the business, because they realize the opportunity, they commit to a more aggressive campaign. It's far easier to get additional revenue from an existing client than a business who is not advertised. So recommendation number three is every single current advertiser engage with, with the information. And then number four, regardless of what you're selling, it could be a video program, it could be a cod pass. Every single time, and I say I spelled conversation wrong here, every single time you engage with a business, start the conversation with the value, the opportunity for them. That is an immediate engagement. It positions you as the expert. They trust you. They are much more willing to share and engage. And I think number five is probably most important. Be excited about the value and the opportunity of your audience. One of the old sales things I learned many years ago, if you're not excited, they're not gonna be excited. Be proud. Be excited about what you can do to help and assist, provide them with the opportunity and the solutions to get more business. If I can help in any way, please send me an email, marling, M-A-R-L-I-N-G, at paper.net. And I covered a lot today, and I understand that, but I wanted to make sure that you, you, you really understood what Pulse can do and to support each one of you. The information is the foundation, but the tools and resource to support each step of the sales process can be very, very effective for you. So on behalf of the Pulse team, thank you so much. And Randy or Carly or Sean, is there anything you'd like to say in, in conclusion? Well, thank you, John. I mean, that was a, a fantastic uh, presentation. And, um, you know, you really have been uh, there for Black Press uh, for so many years. And, and, you know, the work that, that you and your team are doing uh, the data and the tools that you're providing us with uh, really are a sales rep's dream. Um, you know, and, and I think, you know, if our team uh, it follows the top five suggestions that you just made, uh, we're going to be um, extremely successful uh, as we move forward. And, you know, you've really taken the risk out of the uh, ad buying process for our customers. Um, you've empowered us uh, to tell our story more effectively and, and really to grow our business at what is a, a critical point uh, in our history. So, you know, I just want to conclude by thanking you and your team for the transformative work that you're doing. Uh, you really are a, a great partner and a wonderful friend uh, to all of us at Black Press Media. 
So thank you, John. And uh, my thanks to everybody on the call this morning as well. I um, really appreciate the work that you're doing and the efforts that you're making and uh, really looking forward to the days ahead. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, Randy. And just in, in closing, Marlene at paper.net. Carly, is there anything that you'd like to, Carly or Sean, to, 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 to conclude with it? Um, I'd just like to thank everybody for, for the time. Um, the, there's a couple of housekeeping items that I'll be working on in the coming days is updating circulation numbers. Um, as well as uh, helping any of you update user accounts. So if you need some help, I can uh, show you how you can take care of updating user accounts. Um, I'll be going through all of our publisher and manager user accounts as well, just to double check that everybody has the access that they need as well. So uh, John might need a bit of help from uh, you and your team on that if I run into any issues, but in the coming days, you'll, you'll be hearing from me on, um, on updated circulation numbers uh, and uh, day of week publications etc so a little bit more work housekeeping to do but nothing to stop anybody from uh, jumping into starting to use the tools or, or continuing to use the tools right away awesome thanks Carly Sean anything you'd like to add uh, no, uh, no John that was a fantastic uh, present uh, present thanks great to see you again and, and uh, good refresher and and uh, looking forward to uh, sharing during some of some of those with the uh, all our, all our current averages getting out there and drumming, drumming up some more business. Well, thank you so much. And, and Randy, I certainly appreciate your friendship and support over all these years and Carly and everybody else. On behalf of Pulse, thank you. And remember, we're here for you, seriously. That's, it's, it's what motivates us is to be a, that partner that can really make a difference for you. So marleyandpaper.net if I can help in any way. And thank you so much and have a great sales day. Thanks. Thank you, John. Stay safe. Thank you. Thank you, you too. John. Thank you. Bye.